here is a decorative grill that I'm going to cast today and I'll show you how I make the mould The mould has been rolled over, so now take out these pieces here, they stop the pattern from rocking, and then we go around to the little patches here, and just pack in that sand a little bit and trim it back to the parting line, because if we don't, it will give a very rough finish, and so on. I'm going to go all the way around. It's not a really good pattern this one, but like a copy of it. Sprues in position. The mould's been dusted with talc, so it'll separate, and we'll put the other half of the box on the coat. Now we'll cut out the in gates. We'll give it a quick wrap. Finished, ready for pouring tomorrow morning. This one is the most difficult one I've ever had to do. 
and we'll see if it filled up the mould. Here is the casting, original gating system, hasn't been cleaned up. We'll have a closer look. There's the problem there, it didn't fill up there, 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 and there's a cold shut just here. Looks like the metal wasn't hot enough, or I didn't pour fast enough. Here is the original pattern. And I had trouble with the metal filling up the mould just there, so I never bothered fixing it. So when I come across to the casting, I just carved out the sand and it filled up in that spot. Here is a simple chart to explain what I'm going to do in a future video. We've got a melting point of cast iron here and the pouring temperature there. And that gap, or that distance, is what you need to pour the metal and fill up the mould. But to actually get a bigger distance there, increase the pouring temperature, is a bit of a problem with my furnace as it damages the crucible and the refractories. So what I'm going to do is, in a future video, we'll be lowering the melting point of cast iron. So we've got, up to there we've got a bigger range of pouring temperature and hopefully it will fill up that mould.